80 year old Egyptian sentenced to five years in prison for contempt of Islam. On November 18th, the Nozha Misdemeanors Court of Egypt sentenced notable lawyer and intellectual Ahmed Abdul Maher to five years in prison for contempt of Islam. Basically, blasphemy. The case started when Samir Sabri, a controversial Egyptian lawyer, filed the complaint against Maher because, um, before the prosecutor general. Maher's lawyer said an investigation by the Emergency State Security Misdemeanor Court claimed that Maher was, quote, violating social peace and promoting sedition in his book. According to the investigation, Maher labeled the early Islamic conquests as military invasions. Maher also uh, claimed that these conquests were invasions, quote, aimed to enslave women rather than spread Islam. Further, he demanded that Al-Azhar University, one of the world's most important centers for Sunni Islamic thought, apologize on behalf of Prophet Muhammad's descendants who initiated the conquests. The state, uh, the emergency state security court declared that Maher is stirring up sectarian strife and posing a threat to national unity. Wait, five years for just saying this stuff? National unity? Yes. Five years. That's it's, insane. It's so wild. So he's actually like an Islamic thinker and like intellectual. And he has differing opinions on a lot of things. So he will contend that, you know, um, like that Islam was spread through violent conquests, you know, or um, he he talks about how ridiculous and horrible the enslavement of women is. And he's had many, many other um, very controversial takes. One of them we've talked about previously, and I'm going to, um, if we have time, I'm going to show again. Um, and this is just the latest. There were some reports saying this man is 80 years old and like an influential intellectual. And they sentenced him to five years in prison. There were other reports saying it was five years in prison with hard labor. What? What kind of hard yeah, labor? I saw one report that said that. Oh my God. What? Okay. Um, slavery, basically. Hey, how dare you accuse Islam of slavery? Let us make you a slave to prove you otherwise. Literally, that's what they did. He, they, they, okay, hard labor in prison is slavery. That it is what that what that it is. So he was like, hey, yeah, he's being made into a slave at, at age eighty. Amazing. Um, but uh, okay, so technically, you could be a Muslim and see not have no issue with anything he's saying. You know what I mean? Because he didn't nothing that that he says is is challenging Islam itself. He all he's doing is like condemning actions by Muslims, which, I mean, he's a Muslim, right? So, I mean, I think his argument is that Muslims were not always propering, uh, no, not propering, acting properly. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Muslims, prop, I, 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 that, that could be a word. They were not always propering. Uh, <laughs> not, not always behaving pro properly. Um, that doesn't mean, like, that's not an attack on Islam. Like he like especially given that he's a Muslim, he was like, I mean, it it got juicier in the second sentence because you first you said like, oh yeah, they what Muslims did, they did military invasion. I mean, that's the official narrative of Muslim history itself. Like this is not something that um Islam is shy about. It's not like they don't they don't even claim that they spread Islam by peace, right? They're like, yeah, we did military invasion because 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 we Allah is on our side and we won because we had the upper side because Allah was in our was supporting us you know what I mean like they're they're proud of it you know what I mean they're like they're, it's the, saying Islam ex, expanded by military invasion is not and they don't see that as, a, as an attack they see that as a bragging right right but then the second part where you said like they went mainly to get slaves, is that what you said? Like not because to explain Islam, they went there to... to According force. to Maher, those invasions, quote, aimed to enslave women rather than spread Islam around the world. Okay, now that's something that 
got as juicy to the point that most Muslims wouldn't agree with, right? No, um, I think the official narrative would be no, sir. Uh, the goal was to spread Islam. The sex slaves, they just was they just were the rewards for us doing such a good job. Do you know what I mean? Like not us as in the people, like for they for them doing a good job. Like the goal was not the sex slaves. The reward was the sex slave because you were so good at spreading Islam. Okay, so that's again. But again, you could still be a Muslim and see none of this as an attack on Islam. You could all be like, yeah, he's he's just condemning Muslims for their improper behavior. Um, that's not an attack on Islam. But you could you could you could argue that. Yeah, part of what also made him controversial where he was um, Maher disputed Islamic scholars' beliefs about the possibility of the dead being tormented in their graves due to sins. He, mm. Yeah, so he this like, again, this, that. Yeah, again, this could be an attack on certain... I mean, I don't know, like, the, the torture in graves before you go to hell. I don't know if this is that's a, a Sahih Hadith or some lesser authority Hadith, but if it is a lesser authority hadith this is also not anti-islamic because he's not saying he doesn't believe in hell he doesn't he's not saying he doesn't believe in the akharat in the afterlife i mean if he gets to the point where he believes he says oh bless you bless you if he gets to the point where he doesn't believe in like one of the seven you know pillars of faith in islam then he's now like now he's getting like non-islamic but if he says, like, I don't think you get tortured in and grave and hell is still a thing, again, none of this what I'm what I'm trying to say is that even by some Islamic standards, this guy didn't have to go to prison. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can see like in a theocracy like Saudi Arabia or in Iran, where you might get punished for things that is technically their version of Islam, but you could argue that it's not within the core of Islam, but these theocracies just have their way of just punishing people, uh, even for things that challenges their brand of Islam. But then in a country like Egypt, I mean, it's not like Muslim Brotherhood managed to come in power, right? You would think that with, anti with things that could be considered criticism of certain views on, on, of Islam that is not officially all of Islam, you you would think in a country like Egypt, all you would get is like attacks or intimidation or some peep mob, you know, threatening you. You would think at least the government would let you get away with that. You know what I mean? Like you would think the government wouldn't see that. Would which we were like, we can't go after everybody who speaks stuff like this. Like he's not he's not saying like he's not saying Muhammad was not a prophet. He wasn't. He's not questioning the afterlife he's not questioning the quran or faith he's just saying that from my perspective these muslims at this time did this did this wrong thing or this minor view in islam is not authentic and he still gets five years in jail in egypt well, i mean god damn it what do you I'm think about him demanding that al-azhar university apologize for conquests on behalf of al and the sahaba I think Al Azhar University should just apologize for being Al Azhar University. You don't. Need to, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have to apologize for things that they didn't do. They have already been responsible for so much crap themselves that they need to apologize for. That's so funny. <laughs> um, oh, you want to show that video? Do you video? think we have I enough have time it. to show this short little clip from uh, Maher? I have I it. Do you want to share it? You're, yeah, you're I want to share it anymore. Okay, okay, you share it. Go ahead. Um, you are, so I, can you read it? I'm gonna go. You, you sh here. I'll yeah, go, go up. Um, you read um, it well. well what add are it to you the doing? Stream. I am, and you keep removing it. Oh my god. Oh, it's, there's a there's a delay. I'm not gonna touch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we actually covered this, um, a few months ago, or actually, I think it was the beginning of the year when this originally came out. But if you look up, um, let me say his full name, uh, Ahmed Abdul Maher. He has tons of memory gem memory gems. Um, if you guys are not familiar with memory, um, they translate a lot of content from the Islamic world, and um, it's very interesting. So here was a clip that he got in a lot of trouble for. 
let me get to the I sped this up a little bit since I'm just going to translate this from the, well, I'm going to read the subtitles. So he's saying there's no doubt that the young people who are becoming atheists are giving this a lot of thought. They do not become atheists because they are cowards who like heresy. And then the uh, TV host says, could you, could you please clarify what you mean by that? He said, today when someone is in high school at university or who has graduated, when he opens a religious book, he sees that according to all four schools of Islamic jurisprudence, a man cannot bring his sick wife a doctor or some medicine. Do you see? When these texts say that a pregnancy can last four years, and that a child must be named after his father, even if they have been divorced for three years or if he has been dead for four years, Things like this are what are these young people become atheists and heretics. For example, there is a hadith in the Bukhari collection in which it is asked, Do you know where the sun goes when it sets? In the hadith, a man named uh, Abu Dhar said that Allah and the Prophet knows best. The Prophet Muhammad said that the sun goes under the God's throne until morning. Then it asks God's permission to rise and does so only when permission is granted. Whoever falsely attributed this hadith to the Prophet didn't know that there is a celestial cycle and that when the sun sets here it rises in America and vice versa. This person didn't know this. He falsely attributed this hadith to the Prophet Muhammad and then it was cited by one person to the next and so forth until Abu Huraira stated that the Prophet actually said this. My own Can't commentary that... here is it's obviously very important. It's very interesting how he's saying, oh, this was falsely attributed to the prophet, blah, blah, blah. Abu it's... Huraira, otherwise known as Cat Daddy. It's Cat Daddy. <laughs> Cat Daddy. You see, I told you, I told you Abu Huraira is the main source of, one of the main yeah, sources yeah, yeah. of Hadith. Yeah, okay. <laughs> these <laughs> things exist in these texts to this day. <laughs> Sir, how common are such things? What proportion of these texts do they compromise? Their proportional size can be compared to the size of the uh, cove virus in one's body. I weigh 90 kilograms, and if I am infected by the uh, cove virus, what is the proportional weight of the virus relative to my body weight? And look what damage it can do to me. I want to tell you when Satan lies, he tells a small lie, but he embeds it deeply. If someone wants to poison you, he won't spread the poison all over. It is enough for him to put half a teaspoon of poison in a container this big, and he stretches his arms out real wide. Proportion is irrelevant in this case. YouTube, we're not endorsing poisoning anybody here, okay? We're just reviewing this video, but we're this is not yeah. an instruction video, but go on. So I just thought that was... Um, He's actually a really interesting person. I thought 
he that him saying this was very controversial back when this came out last November um because he's actually trying to say he's he's pointing to these flaws that are accepted in major books as authentic and approved by many different schools of thought and saying look at these inconsistencies look at these obvious falsehoods look at these obvious scientific mistakes like People, children see this, young adults see this, they realize it's false and so they leave, which is a much more empathetic and realistic way of looking at why apostasy is skyrocketing across the Islamic world than just saying these people want to go commit sin, right? He also has a lot of really interesting commentary on um, the Arab world and he seems to really want to promote enlightenment values like in his own way and how he thinks that in many ways the Arab world is stagnated to use his words and um yeah so I, I just thought it would be cool to kind of show a little bit about what he talks about so we can kind of put in the larger context of the story and now he's in prison for doing well he's doing not in prison yet Okay, yes, so okay. I saw one source that said that there might be some chance for his lawyers to do some legal magic because he was tried in absentia, meaning he was tried without him being present for the trial. And then there are other articles saying that this is, um, like, there was the highest court through the system, of course, like, there can be no appeal. So I'm not exactly sure what this, this means for him in the end. Legal magic is very fitting, given how these things work. It all sometimes does seem like it makes as much sense as magic when it comes to yeah, like honestly. Um, okay, so can we clap for? By the way, Qasem was upset that you made us clap for the dog news. He was like, "Why did you make us clap for that?" He, he was upset with you. <laughs> anyway, Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.